Well, hello everybody out there and welcome to another episode of Movie Passion. Yeah, it's been quite a while. And yeah, in today's episode, I thought, hey, let's talk a little bit about, I would say, my most favorite summer movie. Because, I don't know, there is something about this movie that just feels like like summer. I don't know what it is. So in today's episode, let's talk a little bit about The Burbs. Now, The Burbs is a really interesting movie because it, it deals with the way how people react or behave with other people that are different. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of The Monsters or The Addams Family, where everybody thinks, okay, because they are different, they have to be evil, they have to be bad. But with the monsters and with the Adams family, it's it's not really the case, especially with the monsters. With the Adams family, well, sometimes there are certain things that are definitely not okay and quite morbid or maybe even illegal. But especially depending on what adaptation you watch, but they are still not downright evil. You know, they, they don't intentionally want to hurt others. That's what I'm trying to say. So what exactly is The Burbs all about? Well, The Burbs is about this little suburb area called Hinkley Hills. And then there is this weird, strange family that moves into that house. And basically, there are a lot of people in that, in that area that already thinks, okay, they are up to something, they are bad, they are evil. So who are those people? Well, the main character is... Ray, Ray Peterson, but he actually doesn't really think that the claw packs are bad, at least not at the beginning of the movie. But then he also has his next door neighbor and also his best friend, Art, who thinks, okay, the claw packs are definitely up to something. There is definitely something wrong with them. Then there is also Rumsfeld, who lives um, across the street, and he's like your typical... Um, yeah, ex-soldier, and he too thinks that there is something up with the claw packs. And then there is also Ricky, who also thinks that there is something wrong with the claw packs. So, so basically, all of them want to convince Ray that there is something wrong with the claw packs. But, you know, at the beginning, Ray doesn't really feel like it. He doesn't really want to know anything about that. But then, over the course of the movie, certain things happen... And Ray basically can't deny the fact that, yes, there is definitely something wrong with the claw packs. It is a really nice movie, very fun to watch. And I especially love all those uh, slapstick elements and all that kind of stuff. But still, the movie definitely has its flaws. I mean, in my opinion, the movie is definitely a cult classic, no doubt about it. But when you look at the overall score on IMDb... Yeah, it, it it's not really that good. It's it's average at best, but it doesn't really, in my opinion, doesn't really has the score that it deserve. But the question is, why is that? Why does this movie has such a low score? Even though it's a cult classic. Well, because the movie definitely has its flaws. I mean, first of all, the characters. The characters are very flat, very one-dimensional, and we don't really get to know anything or that much about either one of these characters, which is sad. I mean, we have Ray. We don't know anything about him. We only know that he um, is basically that he took a week off and he just wants to be lazy around the house and relax. Then there is Arthur. Uh, no, then there is Art, who... Uh, who basically is just always hungry. So if he doesn't eat, he talks about food. And then there is Rumsfeld, who is just, yeah, ex-soldier and still mentally at war at some point. And that's why he still has all this, this war equipment and all that stuff and all this gear. Then we have Ricky. We also don't know anything about Ricky other than the fact that he has to or wants to paint his house and he likes to throw parties 
but that's basically also the same uh, everything that we know i mean we don't even know if he lives alone or if he lives with his parents and if so where are his parents did they go on vacation without him and told him hey uh, while we are on vacation please paint the house we don't know then there is also walter and we also don't know anything about him other than he is just like your typical grumpy old guy i don't know so yeah overall i wish that we would had learn more about the characters that those i wish those characters would have more depth that's what i want to say and to a certain degree i also think this movie maybe maybe they shouldn't have done a movie maybe it would have been better as some kind of a tv show or mini series or something like this or maybe a movie that has two parts instead of just being one movie Maybe there should have been a sequel so that they could, you know, tell the story over the course of two movies and then also put more interesting details inside. I don't know. And I do have to say it's it's difficult to talk about this movie without spoiling. So I would say from this point on, there are going to be huge spoilers. So let's talk about the claw packs and like the big finale the big climax of the movie so the big reveal is basically yeah not that big of a reveal and not that surprising i mean the big surprise is yeah the claw packs are actually murderers they actually kill people but the big secret is that they didn't kill walter they killed the naps so yeah they didn't kill the person that you thought they killed so that's like the big reveal but again, that's also all that there is. I mean, seriously, I want more information. For example, how many people did the claw packs actually kill? That would be a nice thing to know. I mean, the problem is we know they killed the naps, but we don't know really. We, we really don't know anything about the naps other than the fact that they were apparently old. But what does that mean? Was it just an old couple or who were the naps you know how many of them were there how many people were living in that house because the thing is when we see all those uh, human remains in the trunk of the claw pack's car i mean who were those people were those the naps i don't know it it would have been nice to know definitely to figure out who these people were then the biggest question is basically why why are the claw packs even killing people i mean we know that they killed the naps to take over their house but it's very safe to assume that the naps weren't really their first victims because apparently um arthur no why do i always want to say arthur uh, art basically said that um that their previous house burned down which indicates that they also maybe tried to modify the furnace at this house and that something went wrong and that's why the house burned down so maybe that's also the reason why they they were so eager to get the house of the naps because it's a big house with a nice big furnace that they could modify because apparently they want to use uh, the furnace to cremate people question mark which raises another question why do they have so many bones and why are the bones scattered all over the place i mean we know that at one point there were bones in their backyard because that's why vince uh, found that femur underneath the fence which also raises the question Okay, if you bury somebody in your backyard, why would you bury that person this close to the fence so that the neighbor dog could actually dig out a bone from underneath the fence? I mean, who does that? Seriously. But yeah, there were apparently bones in the backyard. Mr. Klopak said that there was at least one skull still inside the furnace. And then we have all those bones and skulls in the trunk of their car. So why do they have so many bones in so many different places? Question mark. 
My theory is this. They killed the naps. Okay, then they probably buried the naps in their backyard because that was at this point the best way to dispose of those bodies because the furnace wasn't properly modified yet. But then after the furnace was finished, after a lot of tests, which is probably all the noise that we always heard and all those crazy lights, maybe that was just the claw packs testing the furnace to see if, it re if it's ready, if it's fully operational. And then after the furnace was ready, they dug out all those remains from the backyard in order to burn them in the furnace. But then apparently they had to move or they had to uh, go to this meeting so because they wanted to move again, maybe. And then they thought, okay, um, yeah, it's very likely that Ray and his friends are going to snoop around in our backyard while we are away. So it's best to take all those human remains with us so that Ray and his friends won't find anything. But then there is the question, I mean, according to uh, Mr. Klopek, there was still this one skull from the naps inside the furnace. So why take all the other bones with you, but then leave this one skull behind? Maybe because they didn't think that Ray and his friends would go, would break into their house and go into the basement. But then why didn't they just leave all the other remains in the basement too? Why did they take all those remains with them? I mean, yeah, the thing is, we don't know if they actually took all those remains with them or if they just brought it back, if they just brought them back. Maybe they went somewhere and dug out all the other remains that they may have buried somewhere else and then brought them back in order to burn them too. So again, like I said, um, a lot of questions at this point. I mean, I think the idea was to actually cremate people that they didn't just want to burn off the flash. I mean, it wouldn't make sense. I mean, they have this thermostat on the furnace that goes all the way up to 5,000 degrees. And if you want to properly cremate somebody so that you really end up with a pile of ash and nothing else, uh, you would need, I think, less than 2,000 degrees for that. So, yeah, there is that. But, yeah, there's... Again, the question is, why are the claw packs killing people? Also, the, the timeline is also something that doesn't really seem to make that much sense because the claw packs killed the naps in order to take over their house. Okay, and it's already been pointed out in many various different places that uh, Art said uh, in, in the early conversation with Ray Art said that he talked to the uh, to the real estate broad who sold the house to the claw packs. But the thing is this, if the claw packs actually killed the naps in order to take over their house, uh, there wouldn't have been a real estate broad to talk to because the house wouldn't have gone wouldn't have gone up to for sale. They wouldn't have sold the house. I don't know. I don't know what happens if somebody dies or all of a sudden disappears. What happens to the house at this point? But the thing is this, the, the claw packs didn't move in right away because apparently when everybody thought that the, that the naps moved away, that was the point when they actually got killed by the claw packs, which is why the naps didn't say goodbye when they moved. Yeah, you know, that's what Ray said. But the thing is this, when we look at the conversation between Ray and Art, Ray said, do you remember the claw packs? Uh, no, he said, do you remember the naps? Now, this is something that you wouldn't say if, if the naps had just moved away, like, let's say, two, maybe three months ago. So it indicates that they have been gone for quite a while now. And also, when you look at the condition of the lawn and the backyard and the overall condition of the house, it looks as if the naps have been away for quite a while. I would say at least a year, at least a year. I mean, look at the condition of the house. 
that's not what a house looks like if you've just been away for a couple of months. But according to Ray at the beginning of the movie, the Clawpacks have been living there for a month, but the house looks like it's been abandoned for at least a year or maybe even a couple of years. So this of course raises the question about the timeline. What happened between the time the Clawpacks killed the Naps and finally the Clawpacks finally moving in? What happened in the meantime? I mean, did their previous house has it already burned down at this point? I mean, if the first house of the Clopex or the previous house hadn't burned down, is this correct? I don't know. If this house didn't burn down, there wouldn't have been a reason for the Clopex to move, right? I mean, should we really believe that they just kill people and then take over their house and live there for a couple of months and then move and then kill other people to take their house and again we don't know their motive we don't know why they kill people if they really just kill people in order to take over their houses or if they just kill random people and just constantly move just so they don't get caught we yeah we don't know anything at this point but yeah when did the house burn down did it burn down like two months ago? Did it burn down a year ago? When did it happen? I don't know. But apparently they killed the Naps like at least a year ago, but didn't move in right away. They didn't take over their house right away. So why? Why did they kill them? <laughs> you know, it, it just doesn't really make sense. It just doesn't when you think about this. And then there is also the, the question, if the Clawpacks really didn't want to be discovered as the murderers they are, if they really didn't want to get caught, why didn't they try to blend in a little bit more? I mean, seriously, the Clawpacks actually did everything they could to arouse as much suspicion as possible. I mean, you couldn't help but think that they are evil or that there is something wrong with them. Seriously, and it's it's almost a, a mystery that they didn't get caught a lot sooner. Seriously. And yeah, there's also a lot of other different questions. Like, for example, if nobody knows anything about the claw packs, how does everybody know their name? I mean, there is apparently no doorbell, no name tag or anything like this. It looks as if there is also no name on their mailbox. So, um, how does everybody know that they are actually called the Claw Packs? I mean, yes, Art said that he talked to the real estate broad, but it sounds as if it was the first time that he actually mentioned this because it was the first time that he mentioned that their previous house burned down. So, if he already talked about um, the Claw Packs and the fact that he talked to the real estate broad, then don't you think that he would have mentioned the burnt down house at this point? So yeah, how, how did they know that they are called the claw packs? I don't know. We don't know. Then there is also the, the problem with uh, Walter's mail. I mean, that police officer or whatever he was, um, he assumed that the claw packs just took care of Walter's mail and that... Uh, Walter's hair was somehow uh, sandwiched between the newspapers and so on. So he assumes that the claw packs took care of Walter's mail. But that also doesn't really make any sense because first of all, it doesn't match with the overall character of the claw packs. I mean, those people constantly want to keep to themselves as much as possible. So why would they all of a sudden take care of somebody's mail? especially if nobody asked them about that. You know, why would they do that? The claw packs just don't seem like the kind of people who would do this kind of stuff out of pure generosity, basically. But then there's also the other question, how did they even do it? How did they get in? Because apparently they didn't have any keys to Walter's house. And I don't think that anybody would actually 
break the law and break into somebody's house only to take care of this person's mail. I mean, seriously, what is the worst thing that could happen if you don't take care of somebody's mail? Seriously, what's the worst thing that could happen? And they didn't just take, you know, they didn't just take the newspapers that were jammed in inside uh, the the mail slot. They actually took everything that was inside the house, behind the door. So how did they get in if they didn't have any keys? And it's very unlikely that somebody, you know, somebody, maybe one of Walter's relatives, gave a, a key to the claw packs because apparently Walter left in such a big hurry that they didn't even have the time to turn off the television. So it's very unlikely that somebody went over to the claw packs and told them, hey, let's take care of the mail and gave them the key. And seriously, if you have all those people living in this neighborhood and by looking at the house, the claw packs would be the last people that you would ask for a favor like that. So again, how did it happen? What did the claw packs want in Walter's house? Because apparently they didn't just go over there to take care of the mail. It just doesn't make sense. Then there is also the question with the dog. I mean, the claw packs have this huge dog. But apparently there aren't any dog turds anywhere on their property and also not inside their house or in the basement or anything. Which means or it indicates that somebody is taking this dog for a walk. Who and when? I mean, are they? should we really believe that they are taking the dog for a walk at, let's say, 3 o'clock in the morning so that nobody sees them because they don't want to be seen by other people? I don't know. It, again, just doesn't really make any sense. And again, it, it does raise a lot of questions. It does raise a lot of questions. Um, and then there, there is also a lot of other hidden secrets in the movie. You know, some things are just Easter eggs. Like, for example... Uh, the uh, the Gremlins serial and some things are just a joke like for example art eating dog food by accident but other things are just are just weird and raising questions like for example when they are all over at the claw packs house uh, there is this one scene where Bonnie opens the door with Ruben behind and we can see that there is a shadow of a noose in the background. What's up with that? Why would they just have a noose hanging there? I mean, this is really something that you would expect maybe from the Adams family or something like this. They usually, I think they also usually use a noose when they ring the bell for Lurch, the butler. But the claw packs, why, why would they have a noose? It's kind of weird. And I think it's not even the only news that we can see because a little bit earlier there's this one scene where Rumsfeld is talking to Hans and we can also see the shadow of a news in the background right there. So I don't know if this is like the same room but only a different entrance. I, I'm, I'm not really sure when it comes to uh, the layout of the, uh, of the house. But yeah, it could be a different news. And then later on, when Ray is running for the bathroom, we can see that there is like this upside down cross in the door. And yeah, this is also probably another hint that there is something wrong with the claw packs. Even though the claw packs apparently aren't really Satanists. I mean, we don't really see any Satanic symbols or anything like this. But yeah, there is, I don't know, it's probably some signs that there is something wrong with them. But then there's also this other crazy thing where they are all at Walter's place. Uh, we can see that Art is wearing two watches at this point. Why? What's up with that? Why is he wearing two watches? And why is this the only time in the entire movie where he does that? Should we just accept the fact that he just felt like it? I don't know. It's, again, such another weird thing. <sighs> yeah, it's... And that's probably why the movie doesn't have a higher score on IMDb because the movie does has its flaws and problems, 
But still, it is a very nice, fun and enjoyable movie with, with a really nice and excellent soundtrack. I really do love the soundtrack. And yeah, I, I really do love watching this movie, even though certain things just don't make sense. Like, for example, why was there still a skull in the furnace? I mean, does it mean that the furnace didn't get hot enough or... Did Mr. Klopex leave the, uh, leave the skull there on purpose for Ray to find? I don't know. We also don't know why Mr. Klopek acted as if Ray took the skull. I mean, he said, hey, I let you keep the femur, but now I want my skull or I might just as well take yours. So why does he say now I want my skull? I mean, does, did he really assume that Ray took the skull? Or did he just say it because the skull very likely got destroyed during the explosion? We don't know. We really don't know. But yeah, I, I wish, to a certain degree, I wish there would have been maybe that the movie would have been a two-part movie so that there would have been two movies. Or maybe, to a certain degree, I wish there would be some kind of a prequel so that we get to know more about the claw packs you know like the backstory or something like this or yeah i don't know if i want a remake of this movie because no matter how good the remake would be it still wouldn't have the same nice feeling that this movie has i mean it feels like summer and then there is also this this weird surrealism going on of some sort and yeah, it's, I mean, some people think uh, Stranger Things, you know, it's like this, this 80s style, but it still doesn't feel like the 80s. Maybe it has something to do with the cameras they used or with the lighting or I don't know what it is, but it just, it just doesn't feel like it. You know, you, you just can't imitate the feeling of an 80s movie. You just can't. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. Yeah, that's it. I still love this movie. I still would highly recommend this movie because it still is very fun and enjoyable to watch. I also like this foreshadowing when Carol says, okay, before somebody falls off the roof or sets themselves on fire, we should go over there and talk to those people. And sure enough, uh, those two things are exactly what happens. Um... Yeah, it's it's a really nice movie. I really love this movie and I I watch it all the time, especially on summer. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I hope you like this video and I see you in the next one. Bye.